So when we released our Ryzen 7000 series content, we had a few hiccups along the way. Our RTX 3090 died halfway through testing comparison processors, which actually pushed us back about a week or so. We then had issues with resizable bar, but we got there in the end. But there was one small issue. We tested the likes of the Ryzen 9 7900X and Ryzen 5 7600X using our Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB 32GB 5200MHz kit, even though AMD sent us a shiny G-Skill 6000MHz kit that was made for AMD and apparently was the sweet spot for performance. Luckily, that brings us to today, where we're able to produce some more content and see if going from 5200 MHz to 6000 MHz is really worth it. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Well, Andy, what are you watching? It's, uh, it's, it's not what you think. Wow, it's so big. Why, thank you. It's the new AOC AG493 UCX, 49 inches of pure performance and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. It's so fast. You can even do two at a time. What? You can connect two devices at a time and split the screen. With FreeSync Premium Pro, a 32 to nine aspect ratio and a built-in KVM, you'll be finished in no time. Gaming, I mean. What, what did you think I mean? Get your mind out of the gutter and click the link in the description to find out more. So scrolling through our YouTube comments and feedback across social media, saw quite a few people getting up in arms about the fact that we didn't test using a 6,000 megahertz kit. And being an honest person, I wanna tell you why. Due to the issues we had, as mentioned, time was a bit, should we say, restrictive. And because we already had testing data in our monumental spreadsheet for all of the Alder Lake processors that we'd already looked at, we continued and just used that data, which meant we only had to actually test the two new Ryzen processors using the same memory. Our intention was to always retest once we had more time using 6,000 megahertz memory, which brings us to today. While it's not rocket science to say that 6,000 megahertz memory is gonna be faster than 5,200 megahertz, it's all about what kind of increase in performance we actually see, not only on Ryzen 7000 series, but also on Intel's 12th generation processors, which is where things get a bit screwed up. AMD made it clear from the get-go that 6,000 megahertz is the sweet spot. And while there are some brands releasing 7,200 megahertz kits, it gets to a point where you have to ask, is the juice really worth the squeeze? What I mean is if the extra money is really worth the extra performance. So hopefully once we get through all these benchmarks, that's something we can address. Because DDR5 on the Alder Lake platform is slightly different. It's more about the applications and games and what ones need bigger memory bandwidth. Because latency isn't really affected due to the memory controller on Alder Lake not being able to run with a one-to-one -one ratio. So I think that's going to throw up some interesting results. It might not be as clear cut as we think because AMD having a sweet spot and Intel just thriving off the fastest memory possible, there's an argument between both ends of the spectrum. And of course, whether the extra cost with higher end and higher speed kits is actually really worth it, depending on the platform you're on. And if the extra performance is even there in the first place. So speaking of performance, let's get into it. And to test for AM5, we use the Gigabyte Aorus X670E motherboard with the 813B BIOS. And for Intel, we use the MSI Z690 Unifier with the 7D28V17 BIOS. For the memory, we use the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB DDR5 32GB 5200MHz kit that we've used for all of our previous testing, as well as the G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 32GB 6000MHz Expo kit that was sent out by AMD. For all of our testing, we use the Zotac GeForce RTX 3090 Trinity with resizable bar enabled and use the NVIDIA 516.94 driver. For both kits, we ran them at their default XMP or Expo profiles to get the fairest like-for-like -like comparison straight out of the box. And all game data was recorded using CapFrame X 1.6.9. So test systems out of the way, let's get into the testing. And if you want to see all of our chart data, you can do so over on Patreon where you get access to that as well as a ton of other benefits. The link for that is down below and it helps like you wouldn't believe so that we can continue to provide accurate and completely unbiased content to you. So starting with Superpine, straight away we do see a decent amount of time shaved off the 7900X, showing the real impact the faster memory has. With the 7600X and the Intel Alder Lake CPUs, however, the gain in time wasn't as significant, potentially pointing to a stronger memory controller on the 7900X. Moving on to W Prime and looking at 32M, and we actually see very little movement in this test. Though to get a better picture, we have to look at the 1024M test. But even here, we see a real mixed bag of results. 
Firstly, with the 7900X, we see a 5% increase in the time to calculate when using faster memory, while the 7600X sees a slight drop in calculation time and Intel results are skewed due to the eCores being enabled. Looking at 7-zip, and again we see a small gain in performance with a 6.9% uplift in the compression test, though only a 2% increase for decompression, both on the 7900X. Funnily enough, the 12900K actually saw the highest leap in performance in the decompression test of around 11%, but again only around 2% in the decompression test. Moving on to ADA64, and as you'd expect, the throughput when looking at read speeds increased dramatically by around 14% on the 12900K. The same on the 12600K and a slightly smaller 12% on the 7900X. While the 7600X, while it did increase in performance, it was only by 0.8%. The right test more than made up for it with the 7600X seeing a 16% increase in throughput, while this time the 7900X only saw an 8.7% increase in bandwidth, which is still very much welcomed while both the 12600K and 12900K saw similar gains between 13-14% to over the 5200MHz kit. Looking at the copy speeds, and it's a very similar story to the read speeds, with the Intel's holding strong performance uplifts of 14 to 15%, while the 7900X increases its throughput by 12%, but the 7600X just struggles to increase to a substantial level, seeing only a 3.5% increase in performance. In terms of latency, both the 7900X and 12900K showed a similar decrease in milliseconds of around 14%, while both the 7600X and 12600K saw slightly lower decreases between 8-9%. to Overall though, the 7900X managed to keep its lead ahead of the 12900K, and the same for the 7600X compared to the 12600K. For Blender, we saw that extra memory speed didn't really assist in any significant way, with only less than 3% increases on both Intel chips, and less than a 0.5% uplift on both Ryzen 7000 CPUs. In Cinebench, we actually start to see a decrease when looking at single core performance, though timings are likely what's at play here. In the multi-core testing, we actually start to see performance declining on the 7900X and not much in it with the 7600X, while both Intel CPUs showed a small performance increase with the faster kit, but only by less than 2%. Corona was another test where it seemed that the 7900X was potentially already at its peak performance as we see no change, while the 7600X sees a second shaved off, but could be treated as margin of error. In terms of the 12900K and 12600K, we do see a few more seconds shaved off the render time, showing that they both still have some extra performance locked inside when paired with the right components. Looking at the raise per second, while we do see uplifts in performance on the 7000 series processors, it's only by less than 1% on the 7900X and 1.8% on the 7600X, while both the 12900K and 12600K see much bigger jumps of 4.8% and 6.7% respectively. In Keyshot Viewer, again, we see both Intel chips with a bigger uplift in performance, seeing the 12900K increase by around 2.4% and the 12600K by 3.6%. So not massive numbers, but compared to the 0.2% uplift on the 7900X and 0.4% increase on the 7600X, it's quite a sizable difference. Moving over to V-Ray, and we again see a small uplift of 2.5% on the 12600K and 2.9% on the flagship 12900K, while AMD's 7600X only comes in ever so slightly better in performance that could be deemed margin of error, and the 7900X actually decreases in performance by 1.4%. Maybe AMD's claim for 6000 MHz memory being the sweet spot isn't that sweet after all. Moving on to 3D Mark Firestrike and we see some interesting results as the physics score on the 12900K increases by just over 7% with the faster memory, which in turn sees the overall score also increase by 4.6%. But that's about as far as the good news goes. As the 7900X sees a decrease in performance, the 7600X sees less than a 1% improvement and the 12600K the same. As we went into 3D Mark Time Spire, we see a bit of a mixed bag with the 12900K seeing just under a 5% uplift with the faster memory, while the 12600K sees a much smaller increase of just under 1%. But where things get really interesting is when we look at the Ryzen 7000 series, with the 7600X giving us a 4% uplift in the overall score, while the 7900X shoots forward by a whopping 10.8% when comparing to the slower 5200MHz memory. Looking at Geekbench and starting with a single core performance, the biggest uplift that we see again is from the 12900K, with an improvement of 6.3% over the slower DDR5 kit. While both AMD CPUs did see an uplift, 
it was only by around 0.8%, while the 12600K saw a slightly better, but still fairly insignificant 1.3% when moving to the faster kit. When looking at the multi-core performance, we again see a strong gain from the 12900K of 6%, though the 7900X does fight back and manages to keep its lead over the 12900K with a 5.6% improvement with the faster DDR5 kit. The 7600X does give some improvements, but only with a 2.2% uplift, while the 12600K sees much larger gains of just over 7%, further cementing its lead over the similar Ryzen CPU. In PC Mark 10, we saw some impressive gains across the board, though some were better than others. While the 7600X saw a 5.2% increase in performance when moving to the faster kit, the 7900X saw a slightly better improvement of 7.6%, which helps push past both Intel counterparts. Though they did try fighting back with a 9.6% uplift on the 12600K and a massive 13% improvement for the 12900K. Though the 7900X still ends up sitting just over 3% ahead of it. As we move into Google Octane, we again see some pretty strange results where on both the higher end AMD and Intel parts, we actually see performance dipping lower on the faster 6000 MHz kit, while the lower end 7600X and 12600K see what is typical with a faster memory providing better performance. For Mozilla Kraken, every CPU provided better performance with a faster memory kit, but of less than 2% across the board, it's nothing that would ever really be noticeable, even on a longer form test that uses this benchmark's way of testing. Finally, when looking at Web Expert, we see the 12600K giving us the biggest gain in performance of around 2.4%, while the 7600X didn't change with the faster memory. The 7900X and 12900K both increased their score by 1.5% and 2.3% respectively, while the 7900X still holds on to its top spot. So moving on to games and starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where in a strange turn of events, the 12600K manages to further secure its lead with a 1% uplift in performance, which isn't anything to really shout home about, but it's more of a gain than what we saw from both the 7600X and 7900X. Looking at Cyberpunk 2077 and we see some pretty decent gains overall, with the 7600X seeing the biggest uplift in performance of 8.3%, which now puts it just ahead of the 7900X, though the uplift of 6.9% given to the 12600K manages to allow it to take the top spot between all processors tested today. For F122, we saw a bit of an anomaly with the 12600K, where it actually dropped around 15% in performance, and multiple retests garnered similar results too. So I can only assume there is a bug of some kind between the game and the hardware. Now the other chips all saw small increases with the 12900K seeing an uplift of 3.7%, which still wasn't enough to overthrow the 7900X, which while it saw higher averages, actually saw the 1% lows drop ever so slightly. In Far Cry 6, the 7900X and the two Intel CPUs all saw gains of around 2% when moving up to the faster memory, while the 7600X saw a much smaller gain of 0.8% again pointing fingers at a potentially weaker memory controller. As we look at Forza Horizon 5, we do see gains, but nothing of significance across both of the Ryzen chips, while the 12600K sees the biggest improvement in performance of 4.3%, though the 12900K still tops our charts. The faster memory in Horizon Zero Dawn did make a small improvement of around 2% on both the 7900X and 7600X, but with frame rates so high to start with, it's not going to be something you'd even notice. The bigger takeaway from the faster memory is kind of how it ironed out the 1% lows and increased them by up to 4.5% in some cases, depending on the CPU. We saw pretty consistent increases in performance in Microsoft Flight Sim with the 12900K actually seeing the biggest uplift of just under 7%, though now we actually see the 7600X overtaking the 7900X for that top spot. And again, some pretty sizable increases in the 1% lows, such as the 7900X with a huge 10% gain. Both the 12900K and 7900X are a dip in performance on the averages in Red Dead Redemption, while the lower end 7600X and 12600K actually saw an increase in performance when using the faster G-Skills 6000 MHz memory, though all processors performed within the same margin of each other. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was another title where we saw a dip in performance with the faster memory on all processors tested, with the biggest drop evident on the 7600X. 
Now, when new processors launch, it's not completely out of the spectrum that performance could improve through updates that can harness more power. So we could expect this to change at a later date. Finally, in Watch Dog Legions, we see the higher end parts with the largest gains overall, with the 12900K coming in with an 8% increase in performance with the faster memory and the 17900X following behind with a 5.7% uplift. Though it's not enough to get close to 166 FPS that we see from the 12900K with that 6000 megahertz memory. So the Ryzen 7000 series, I don't want to talk kind of too much about them specifically because we said enough about all that in our 7600X and 7900X content that's on the channel. But what we set out to do today was to kind of find out if the supposed sweet spot is actually worth it. And as always, there's a metric ton of data that we've gone through and it all sounds pretty daunting because kind of some figures are up, some are down and some are just, well, they just frankly don't make sense. In an ideal world, faster performing memory should see performance uplifts, but a lot of that comes down to if the game or application is written to kind of harness the extra performance, and of course, how the individual processor handles faster speed memory too. One thing was kind of, I guess, extremely clear, and that is that the higher end parts from both AMD and Intel do harness that extra power a little bit better. In fact, on both the 12900K and the 7900X, we see a performance gain of around 1.9%, while the lower end 7600X sees a smaller increase of around 0.4%, and the 12600K shows a dip in performance of around 1%. Now, what is clear to see though is that the 7600X isn't that far away from the 7900X and 12900K overall when looking at the average FPS, and the same for the overall comparison of 1% lows. Now, I made it pretty clear on my 7600X video that it's an okay processor, but wasn't good enough to fend off Intel's 12600K, which had already been out for quite some time and coming in for around the same price. I guess I was just expecting more for the money. And that was kind of the crux of this whole video. You're being marketed to in the sense of buying faster memory, but you're not exactly getting much more for it, especially when the price increase from 5200 megahertz memory to 6000 megahertz is around 53% or so, both in the UK and the US. Now I get it, AMD said pretty clearly that 6000 megahertz is the sweet spot, and I get their logic and kind of thinking behind it, as it offers good performance for a balanced budget when looking at every speed of DDR5 from 4800 megahertz to 7200 megahertz because yeah, it sits kind of somewhere in the middle. So I get their argument, but on the same hand, 5200 megahertz is still more than enough if you're willing to lose 1.9% in performance, but save over 50% from a value standpoint. Now this is especially clear when looking at the cost per frame with the cost of the processor and memory added into the equation. And we can significantly see that the 5200 megahertz memory on all processors offers up superior value for money in the UK with the 7600X and 7900X offering up similar costs on the 5200 megahertz memory, while the 6000 megahertz memory just adds what feels like unnecessary costs. It's exactly the same in the US market too, with the 12600K actually offering slightly better value to the 7600X. But truthfully, there isn't much in it. But again, we see some big growth with the 6000 megahertz kits with all processors. My big argument is that the 53% saved as an average could be better spent in other areas, like buying the 7700X instead of the 7600X, which is only 33% more expensive, or buying a faster SSD, or putting the money towards a better GPU or something. What I'm trying to get at is that you have options and buying faster memory because it's being branded as the sweet spot only takes performance into consideration before you go for kind of faster memory that ends up offering diminishing returns in terms of performance. But they never actually look at pricing while doing these calculations. And that's where I think a lot of this has maybe been lost in translation. So the key takeaway here is that yes, faster memory does give you improved performance. That's uh, well, that's a given, but does that make it worth it? Most definitely not. So buy what is within your budget and use your budget wisely. And yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. So let me know in the comments section below, did the results surprise you? What do you think about AMD claiming that 6,000 megahertz is the sweet spot? Does it all now seem to be smoke and mirrors? I'm actually interested to see what you think. And if you like this video, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then our Patreon is down below where you'll get access to a ton of other e technics based content and access to an exclusive area on our Discord. So definitely check that out. And uh, hopefully I'll see you there. That side, 
I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.